Uh, this is uh, St. Anthony of Padua, uh, Retrad, and I have uh, His Excellency Bishop Pierre Wong to uh, talk about his story, his time uh, uh, with, with the SSPX and uh, onward uh, uh, to now being a, a set of contest bishop. Um, I'm grateful to have you on, Your Excellency. Um, do you want to start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself, who ordained you and uh, who consecrated you and a little bit about the chapel you're with? Yes, for sure. So should we say a, um, a, sh a short prayer before? Sounds good. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So good, uh, good afternoon, uh, Gregory and everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Uh, we've been uh, reporting, uh, postponing this um, interview for a while, but um, finally we get to uh, to talk together. So um, I'm Bishop uh, Pierre Roy, and I uh, I'm a French Canadian. I live in New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, so we have a church here in uh, in Moncton, close to Moncton City, um, a fairly, you know, well, not so big, but um, uh, between 100 and 150 people here in Moncton. <clears throat> and uh, we also do have um, a chapel in the north of New Brunswick. But uh, overall, I'm serving uh, many provinces of Canada, uh, so Newfoundland, um, so the island of Newfoundland, um, Nova Scotia, um, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick. Um, I also visit Quebec on a, reg on a regular basis and also a little bit of Ontario. So it's a very large um, uh, apostolate, a field of apostolate. And um, most of our people here don't have mass every Sunday. I think that might be one of the topics that we we will cover. But uh, you know, many people, many of the faithful here have mass um, every three weeks, every six weeks, sometimes, or even every two months. So just to give you an idea, I'm the only priest, well, bishop. Um, saying the Latin Mass and living in the four provinces of uh, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, um, New Brunswick and PEI. So there's no other priest living in this area of Canada and saying the Latin Mass, uh, all groups uh, together, you know, everybody together, there's, there's no one. So there are, there are a few people who visit, but uh, I'm the only one living here. Uh, wow. So it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, uh, there, there aren't many, uh, many, uh, many clergy here. When you say you're the, the, the only uh, clergy there, is that including, uh, let's say, the SSPX and resistance as well? Right. Everybody, uh, everybody, FSSP, take everybody together. Oh, okay. there's, no, there's nothing uh, here for the Latin Mass except for uh, Our Lady of Joy Mission, which is the name of our association here and apostolate, our Our Lady of Joy Mission. Your Excellency, can you let us know who who ordained you, when you were ordained, and, and when were you, uh, who consecrated you, and when that took place? Yes, so I was ordained on the 17th of June, uh, 2011, by Bishop Fellet in uh, Winona. I have been a seminarian in France and uh, Switzerland for the longest time, but I spent the last uh, four months of my seminary in Winona. Um, and that's where I've been ordained on the 17th of June, uh, 2011. And as for the Episcopal consecration, I've, I've been consecrated last uh, January the 7th of this year by Bishop uh, Ribeiro da Silva in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay, and at your chapel, you said, I know you said you're the only, so, so there's no other priests that work with you at, at your chapel? No, we're expecting uh, the arrival of Father Angelo Melo, uh, who is a priest from Brazil, now working in Mexico, and uh, uh, who left the Novus Ordo, joined uh, Bishop De Silva, was reordained by Bishop Williamson. Well, he joined the resistance first and then uh, eventually joined Bishop De Silva. So we're expecting his uh, coming to come and help me. Uh, but as of now, I've been alone as a priest. 
Oh, wow. That'll be nice when he comes, huh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting him anytime. I think I want, I want to start first with uh, your, your upbringing. Did you, did you grow up in the traditional, um, in the traditional church? Yes. So uh, both my grandparents on both sides on in the 1970s, beginning of 1970s, they both opposed the new mass and what uh, was happening in their parishes. And um, so they started, uh, they, they have a similar story on both sides, even though they didn't know each other. Um, they would go to different uh, Novus Ordo masses, always trying to find something that was reverend, that was, uh, and sometimes going to mass uh, four or five times on Sundays, uh, always coming out of the church and saying, oh, this wasn't the mass. We still have to fulfill our Sunday obligation and find a, a real mass. So eventually, obviously, they, they started um, uh, looking for um, all the priests who were still saying the Latin mass. And eventually the SSPX, uh, the SSPX was established in 1977 in Quebec. And so that's, uh, you know, where my parents met uh, uh, either at old priest, older priest, and uh, eventually also the SSPX. So I was born, my parents were already attending uh, the SSPX, and I was baptized uh, in, a, in a priory there of the Society of St. Pius X. I uh, went to school also at Holy Family School, the Col Saint Famille in Quebec. Um, uh, for many years, uh, so most of my um, uh, school uh, was done with the SSPX, and I have even eventually went two years in France in a society school just before entering the seminary. Um, so I wanted to continue within, uh, you know, tradition uh, prior to enter uh, seminary. So that's why I spent two years in the north of France also in an SSPX school. So I'm very much, a, you know, a product of the SSPX. And um, I'm, I'm a, even the first priest who was ordained in that school. So obviously you can understand that my depar departure was uh, quite a shock for the parish there. Were you uh, confirmed by Archbishop of Fez? I was confirmed by uh, Bishop Williamson. I never knew uh, Archbishop Lefebvre myself. I have only one memory, and, and it's uh, when my father heard of the death of our Archbishop Lefebvre. I, I remember I was quite young because I was born in 1986 and he died in 1991. Okay. Um, so I was five years old, I think. But I, I remember my father saying, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? So it was a shock, you know, obviously for him. And that's the only memory I have of uh, personally of uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, which is not a personal one. But. Okay. Um, when did uh, you start uh, sensing the call to to the priesthood? Um, I remember being five years old uh, and uh, willing to be a priest. I think it's uh, for me. It's uh, in particular the liturgy. I was uh, very much uh, touched by the liturgy. Uh, going to uh, the SSPX Mass <clears throat> as a child and um, being uh, very much imp impressed at the sacredness and uh, you know beauty of the liturgy, serving Mass. Um, the example of uh, the Society of Saint Pius X priest as well in the school where I was, I was always and my 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 parents always had a great. Uh, respect when i was a child you know for the clergy and this uh, certainly had a, a great uh, influence on me and um, i would say that as far as my vocation is concerned it, it it was something quite constant and something quite quite um, strong always uh, with a, you know a few times in my uh, teenagers teenage when i i wasn't uh, so much on board anymore but for most of the time uh, you know it was clear in my mind that god was calling me and that i, I wanted to be a priest so i would say from the age of 5 it was clear and uh, it didn't leave me you know, until uh, entering the seminary. Um, what, uh, which, which seminary did you attend? So I was one year, I went one year in um, uh, Seminaire saint Curé d'Ars, so St. John Mary Vianney Seminary of the Society of St. Pius X in France. Well, the, in Econ, you know, you go first uh, one year in, um, in France in, uh, at this seminary for the first year, and then you spend the five uh, remaining years in uh, in Switzerland. So the, the rest of my formation was uh, in Econ, so the, the, the seminary established by Archbishop Lefebvre in, uh, in uh, Switzerland. So 
Senpai's the 10th seminary. And in the last four months, as I mentioned, uh, in uh, St. Thomas Aquinas in, uh, in uh, Winona. Uh, before we get into maybe uh, your seminary time, I'm curious about maybe uh, your 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 family did you have a large did you have do you have a large family do you have a lot of brothers and sisters or are you sing only child or no we're 13 in the family so 13 uh, yeah so large family and uh i have a sister also who is a nun in uh, uh the, the the dominicans of uh, fanjo uh they have i think they have uh, three schools in um in the united states so the teaching dominican nuns uh, associated with uh, the society of saint Pius the 10th I'm far away from home here. I'm I'm uh, about seven hours drive from uh, my home, my hometown. Uh, so I do see uh, some of them when I go uh, to uh, to my hometown. But uh, other than that, no, I'm uh, I'm far away from them. So yeah. Um, I think this may be a, a personal, so we can always you know we can always you know edit it or whatever if you don't feel like talking about it. But I'm curious. Of the of your family that's alive or maybe your parents are still around, what do they think about you? The the, the projection projection of that you've gone. Oh, uh, <laughs> they they're not too much in agreement. I would say no. They are very much uh, SSPX minded, and so when I left the SSPX um, in 2016, uh, I had the support of my grandparents and my parents, who uh, understood better. You know the the struggles of tradition but for the rest of my family they are very much opposed to the course i have uh, taken you know even though they keep uh, friendship they, they they're not in agreement at all no so does this make for uh, this when you guys get together does this topic come up and in, in around the around the dinner table <laughs> <laughs> we try to avoid the topic i, I would say <laughs> right okay yeah i could always i'm always curious about about that about the family dynamic when uh, with with a, with a big decision like this, especially growing up in the SSPX, if you imagine. Right, I would say that this um, makes us uh, live. You know the words of uh, of our Lord that we live, uh, father and mother, brother and sister. When you're a member of the clergy, you cannot take your decisions by what your family thinks. Obviously, you're quite influenced by your family. Yeah, but it, but I I don't see how you could follow you know the, the the thoughts of of your family we're in a different world where we have left everything behind to follow christ so we have to go where we think is right yeah so you entered the seminary uh at what year uh it was uh, two, 2000 uh, 2005 so um yeah 2005 uh, october okay. 2005 and i was ordained uh, june 2011 all right. Uh, it, how was how was your time in the seminary over there overall? Uh, I, I keep uh, great memories of my of my seminary. It's a time that's um, you know extraordinary in a way because you find yourself surrounded by a, a lot of young men who are of the same mindset, and so I think it's a time of friendship. It's a time. Uh, the only regret, you know, I think many priests must have the same is that you don't always understand how what you're studying is actually going to be useful for your mm. ministry. You know, now that I'm in the ministry, I've been a priest for 13 years. Yeah. Um, now, you know, there's there are certain things that I would certainly pay more attention to if I were to go back to the seminary. <laughs> but uh, great memories yeah, of, of the seminary. What, what are some of the things you would pay more attention to? I would say history of the church. History mm -hmm. is the church is, uh, you know, the, the history class was at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, just after the meal. So it was hard to <laughs> it was hard to be very attentive. But I, I do see better today how important it is to understand, uh, you know, what happened in the past of the church, what happened in the different crises and how we came out of these crises. Uh, I keep coming back to history of the church as something that I, I would like to uh, to deepen. Your uh, with the your time at the seminary, I'm assuming there. How many were in your were in your class with you that that were ordained with you? Um, I you think know? we we entered 21, and I think we eventually were 16 to be ordained. Uh, I, I think so. Uh, among which um, there's uh, now Bishop Bellini, who is a resistance bishop in uh, in Ireland. I don't know if you heard about him. I have uh, heard of yeah. 
yeah, Bishop Bellini was in my class. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, most of them are are still part of the SSBX, uh, I, I think. Uh, during so during your time, course of seminary, you guys were all, you guys like lived pretty much lived together and 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 do everything together, or is it is you guys building like a kind of a close relationship during that time, the, the yeah. particular class or whatever? Uh, no, I would say, well, I would say the first year we're, we're just the, the only year that's together. You know, we're the first year in a different seminary. But mm -hmm. as soon as we get to uh, the, the, the bigger seminary in Econ, uh, friendships are not so much anymore uh, within the same year. But mm -hmm. well, we, we do keep, you know, obviously uh, closeness by being of the same year and receiving the orders together. But uh, friendships go more about uh, personalities and uh, also convictions because nobody is completely on the same page about things. So also uh, um, we, we're given a different role in the seminary. Some will be sacristans, some will, some will be uh, in charge of the liturgy, some will be in charge of cleaning, there's, there's, there's different teams. Uh, doing the work and um, yes friendships go also with this uh, at the seminary when you were ordained where was your first post with the fspx where did they send you i was sent to um I was sent to well first I was sent uh, to preach a few retreats in uh, in Ontario I barely spoke English at the time <laughs> growing up French in Quebec um uh, and then well, but that was a short uh, just a few weeks and then I was sent to the district house of Canada it was a new district house the district house was was moving to a, a different place south of Montreal it was a house under construction at the time and so I was sent there. Uh, I would spend at least of the six, uh, uh, the the six first months of uh, of my priesthood. I was uh, spending the day doing renovations in the district house, and then the week in the, in the apostolate. It was uh, it was quite challenging because I had to learn everything at the time. At the same time, uh, I was uh, in charge of a of a church in Sherbrooke. So. Uh, few a few hours away from the district house for three years and then uh, another chapel in montreal uh, for two years and i left the sspx while i was in charge of this chapel in montreal but the whole time five years i was uh, at the district house of canada is the district house similar to like a priory they have like pri a priory uh, yeah it, it is a priory but it is a large priory so we serve chapels around the district house uh, but at the same time, there's uh, district meetings. We're doing work for the for the district, so we're we're uh, in connection with the whole uh, district. So you you know we're living with the the district superior. So obviously he will talk about uh, different places. So we're we're very much in touch with the the whole district, while at the same time uh, being uh, in a quarry where we we're working. And I would say most of our work is about the chapels. Uh, surrounding the 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 priory so um you you were ordained you said in two in 2012 11, 11. Oh, 11, 2011 and then what year did you eventually leave the sspx i left uh, the sspx on the 3rd of june uh, 2016 so it's a it's a kind of date that you don't forget in your life sure. so on the 3rd of june it was the the feast of the sacred heart I uh, made the final decision to leave the SSPX. Were you at the same district the, your entire time with the SSPX? Yes, always in Canada. In Canada, okay. So while you were, from the time you were, you were, you were assigned there, and then um, obviously the time you left, what was it that began to change your thinking? In other words, um, did did you did you did you go e immediately to like a, a set of contest position or did it kind of progress differently? Like you went more maybe to a resistance position to a set of contest position or what what was the things that maybe got you a little disenfranchised with the SSPX? Well, um, after one year of priesthood, I was sent to Toronto uh, for the summer just for a few weeks to replace another priest who had made a declaration at the time. Uh, uh, in favor of the resistance, so the, mm -hmm. the the prior of this place 
was uh, you know speaking against the agreements with Rome and so I wasn't too much into this because I was just a young priest and I had you know so much to learn uh, just to be a priest so I was sent there to replace him while he was brought to the district house you know in order to be uh, uh, well disciplined a bit I would sure. say and I wasn't told actually why I was sent there. So I, I was just asked if I could do a replacement to, to the, to, to, in Toronto. So I went there and uh, I remember after the, the Sunday Mass, uh, some of the faithful started challenging me with uh, Bishop Fillet, he's doing this, he's doing that. It was, it was during the general chapter of 2012 when they, you know, put down the condition of a, of a, and a doctrinal agreement necessary before any practical agreement. So just this started, I would say, the whole process. And uh, so I started looking and searching what, what's going on with uh, with the superiors, what was going on with uh, the general chapter, and so on. So I became aware, I would say, of uh, the fact that there was a, a will to go towards Rome, uh, and obviously an opposition to it. Uh, when I was at the seminary, the spirit was very much uh, at least among a part of the seminary. And I did um, uh, buy this uh, this spirit that with Benedict XVI, things were uh, taking a good turn and uh, tradition would slowly come back and, and so on, which obviously was uh, quite false. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was very much in this mindset at the end of my seminary. And uh, but then, you know, I, I started hearing the priest speaking against the agreement with Rome uh, and so on. There was a uh, much turmoil in the society of St. Pius X, priest leaving. Um, so all of this was kind of, I would say, the beginning of, of it all. But then I attribute most of all my uh, departure of the society of St. Pius X to the fact that I became non unacum. Um, on the day of the election of Francis, I was uh, very much scandalized by this man, uh, what he was doing to the papacy, how he was despising uh, the papacy instead of uh, fulfilling his role as a as a, as a so-called pope. And so the day on the day of his uh, election, uh, I remember I was saying mass, and uh, in the canon of the mass, I stopped and I said, "No, I'm not in communion with Francis, and and I will never be again until we have a, a Catholic pope." At the time, I I wasn't very firm on the fact that Francis uh, was in the pope, but I, I I knew that he wasn't a Catholic, which uh, obviously you know today, I look at it and I said, "How how could he be a, a pope if he's not a Catholic?" But Still, at the time, you know, the mindset because I was raised in the SSPX, the the my mindset was well, he's not a Catholic, but uh, he he's still the Pope. Or well, I wasn't very affirmative about this, but I became non unacum, and I would say that this made its way towards uh, eventually leaving the SSPX, because for three years I was non unacum. I wasn't speaking much about it. Nobody again was uh, asking too too many questions about this, but. Um, the more you know the more i i i was seeing i the most the more i heard what he was see, saying the more uh, it became clear to me that we were dealing with a false church there and it, and then eventually amoris letizia came around and um, i was uh, uh, well i gave a talk uh, a sermon rather in montreal in the chapel i was uh, in charge of i gave a sermon and i you know, I opposed uh, uh, vehemently Amoris Letizia. And as Francis was issuing, issuing this uh, document, Amoris Letizia, uh, I, you know, Bishop Fillet was at the same time saying, uh, you know, we're in communion with Rome. We're, they say we're not in full communion, but we are. And we don't know what full communion is, but we are in communion. And I, this couldn't stick into my head that uh, our, our, our super general was saying that we were in communion with Rome, with the Vatican, while Francis was opening uh, communion to adulterers. Uh, so I gave this sermon, uh, and this was the beginning of uh, my turmoil because uh, obviously it went to the superior, it was recorded, it went to the superior, who said, you know, told me, well, after all, it's not uh, too serious. But uh, maybe a, a week later, I think he had spoken with Menzingen, with, so with the, the, the headquarters of the Society of St. Pius X, and he clearly received uh, some orders that uh, I was to, uh, to be put to silence. And so he came back to me, 
uh, with a, a very different tone this time and told me basically, you know, you have to make a choice, either you're uh, leaving the Society of St. Pius X or uh, you have to uh, keep silence about the agreement with Rome. You know, you cannot criticize uh, what the superiors are doing and staying in the Society of St. Pius X. I agreed very much with this and I told him, well, uh, uh, I'm going to think about it. And so uh, as soon as I said that, he said, oh, no, uh, we're not willing you to leave and so on. So it was just to threaten me in a way. But I, I took his word and I said, no, you, what you said is right. What, what, what you said is the truth. Uh, I cannot be among you and criticize you. So if I'm not in agreement with you, I will have to to leave the Society of St. Pius X. So about a month later, I uh, made the final decision to leave the Society of St. Pius X. Now, <clears throat> just to clarify, you, you, this, you got pulled to the side because you spoke out from the pulpit against the non-Catholic stuff that Francis was doing. Right. Uh, well, not so much because in the Society of St. Pius X, you're allowed to criticize uh, the one they call the Pope as much as you want, uh, but you're not allowed to criticize uh, the superior of the okay. Society of St. Pius X. So uh, <laughs> it would have been okay as long as I spoke against Francis. But from the moment I said that I was worried about uh, the direction that the Society of, of St. Pius X was taking and that I asked the faithful to pray, so that we wouldn't uh, get closer to Rome in uh, the circumstances. Also, I remember, and I wasn't the only priest, but when uh, the, ju the so-called jurisdiction of Francis was given to the Society of St. Pius X priest, um, I said from the pulpit from the very day, I said, I'm not accepting this jurisdiction of Francis, and I'm still hearing your confessions, you know, by uh, because sure. of the state of necessity in which we find ourselves. So, no, it was really the fact that I um, mentioned the fact that the, the authorities of the Society of St. Pius X were uh, working on an agreement with Rome, that I was worried about this and that I was asking for prayers so that this uh, would not happen. This is what got me into trouble. Gotcha. So. Uh, just to go back a little bit, uh, this is in the, in the early part of what you were saying. When you first, you know, you first got there to replace that particular priest who was being more resistant-minded. What yeah. were some? What were? What was the attitude of the parishioners? What were they asking you? What were the, some of the things that they were concerned with? Oh, I, I uh, it was. It, it is difficult to remember because sure. uh, these people were rather yelling at me than than anything else, as a, as if I was aware of of what was going on and uh, part of the plot to, to remove their priest there. So. I, I can't remember, but I just remember that they weren't happy, and this uh, led me to look uh, a little deeper into that subject. Okay, okay, so okay, so the priest obviously was quite loved among the people there, and then they yes. the SSPX pulled him because of his sort of resistance mindset stance or whatever was going on. Right, and so they brought you in, and and, <laughs> and, and so they they saw and, you as part of the as, okay. All right, and I ended up being the one who left, and this priest is still part of the SSPX today. Sure. Okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> All right. What, um, do you? Okay. So, well, from when you're from the time when you were first ordained with them, to the time when you left the SSPX, did you sense a shift in attitude, or was it pretty much the same? All was it same all around? The only issue is just don't don't say anything about the the leadership, but. You know, that, obviously, we'll get, I, I, think I can understand that, that getting you in a little trouble. Um, but well, what I can clearly say uh, and see and say is that <clears throat> the, the priests have become way more silent for some mm -hmm. reason. They don't speak out as they used to. When I was still part of the Society of St. Pius X uh, uh, up to 2016, uh, some priests, especially in France, would make would make public declarations against uh, what was going on in the Society of Saint Pius X. They were punished. They were transferred. They, you know, there were all kinds of things going on, but they were still speaking out. Uh, but right now, you know, we don't hear anything anymore. Well, they've replaced Bishop Philippe by, by um, Father Payerani, and I think Father Payerani is there to, uh, you know, keep things quiet. And uh, I, I've been approached uh, four or five. times times, I, I, I don't remember exactly, by the Society of St. Pius X in the last uh, eight years, 
uh, to ask me if I was willing to come back. Sometimes it were, you know, these were individual priests, but also uh, the district superior asking me if I wouldn't come back after all, because now we had, they had uh, Father Payarani, so he wasn't Bishop Fadley anymore, so I wasn't to be worried anymore and so on. But, I, you know, I answered uh, uh, everything that Bishop Fadley has done, accepting jurisdiction for uh, Francis for confessions, accepting uh, jurisdiction for marriages, and all of this, uh, Father Payarani hasn't come back on this. So I said, I will be back with you if Father Payarani comes back on these uh, things that have been done. Plus, I told them, you know, I'm clearly non unacum. I will not come back on this, and I won't be silent about it. So these are my conditions, which uh, I never received uh, any answer, you know, for that. One of the things I was surprised, and I mean, I, mean, I wasn't around the SPX, but, but you, know, you know, when they were <laughs> more, all this stuff. So, but I was surprised to, to recently see that, uh, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop Tissier, if I'm saying his name right, uh, having confirmations at a Norisoto parish. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Um, is that something, uh, how, was that something that would con be considered like not a big deal uh, when, in your time with the SSPX? As, uh, I would say, that you, it, would have been, it would have been surprising, but uh, the question wasn't so much I don't think the Society of St. Pius X has changed uh, on this regard. Uh, if uh, people, if bishop, Navasoto bishops and priests would have opened their church for us to use uh, prior to, uh, uh, you know, in, in the past when I was part of the SSPX, I think that everybody would have been happy to use them mm -hmm. so it, it, what changed is the 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 attitude of the novus ordo on this point what what is different is the attitude of, of the novus ordo towards the society of saint Pius x so i know that the resistance have criticized this very much and this would have never happened under archbishop lefebvre and so on but i don't think this is true when you you no i think bishop lefebvre would have been um would have fine, been with fine with that yeah okay that's interesting okay that, that's interesting that so what, what? So maybe so. So what you're saying is back, you know, back in the in the day or back in the past, they they would have been very willing to use the the the, the North Soto parishes, but the North Soto was not willing for them to come in. Yeah. So this wasn't discussed too much, but sure. you know, Francis being having a, a pilgrimage and and whole, and and mass in the, in the district of France in Lourdes in the sanctuary of Lourdes for many many years and and nobody was uh, scandalized by this you know using the novus ordo churches is, is something that uh, is quite uh, accepted in uh, in um, in the society of saint pas ten except that you know they weren't given the opportunity very often okay uh interesting and then having a brain freeze on what i'm going to ask you next um when when um when when you started becoming more uh, uh, non non unicum, did you you didn't share this with anybody? Is that correct, or did were you able to? I mean, was this something you talked with other people about? Um, a, a few priests at least knew about it, and um, to say the truth, uh, um, I, I wasn't asked too much by anybody. I made that decision. And this wasn't uh, discussed too much, um, but there were a few, uh, you know, a few things happening. For example, I was the, sacri the sacristan in this uh, district house, and I refused to put the, the the picture of Francis in the sacristy as we're supposed to do in the Society of Saint Pius the Tenth. And uh, so there were a few, uh, you know, a little bit of turmoil around this, but eventually. So I remember this is district superior t telling me you have to put this uh, this picture of Francis in the sacristy, and me answering, uh, "No problem, Father. I I'm going to put his picture, but I'll, I'll put the one with uh, with his clown nose on. If if I put any picture, it will be the one with his clown nose on. So, <laughs> you know, the one is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that. the district uh, superior let me go with, without putting this picture in the sacristy eventually. So. Um. Do you think that within the society, what, what's their ad, overall is their attitude toward set of accountism? Have they, is it a mixed opinions or are there, yeah, just what, what, what are your, what are, have you noticed? I think uh, many of the faithful are set of actually. They, they, yeah. uh, they don't believe uh, Francis is the Pope. 
some of the priests uh, are as well. I would say there's a number of priests who are non-unakum, but they have to agree to uh, not speak about this and keep that silent. And even when they're asked, most of them won't answer. They used to uh, answer, yes, that they were non-unakum, but I think today most of them would not give provide an answer to anyone asking them. Yeah. Um, uh, for the majority of the society of the society of saint the ten faithful have no clue of what's going on and the discussions that uh, we're having you know for them it's a completely different world they trust uh, the society of saint Pius the ten they can't imagine that uh, uh, and i would say that for myself as well it was a, a step to take when you you've been raised in the society of saint Pius the ten when you've been given a, a way of thinking uh, it's not easy because you know the, you you end up thinking that uh, leaving the SSPX is the equivalent of of losing your soul. Mm. So you have difficulty to think outside of the, of the society of Saint Pius X, and so we're presented uh, to the faithful as uh, dangerous people, as people who do uh, all kinds of crazy things and have no uh, consistency and so on. So we're very much demonized in in the society, and I think this is one of the reasons why people don't. Uh, uh ask uh, you know don't want to know better what we are about and why we're we're different and so on um did you meet some set of contents that would, would that would attend the chapels of the the society okay. while you were there oh yeah for sure yeah for sure okay yeah so so they so they're there but they just kind of usually the set i'm assuming usually those who hold to a set of a contest type you just kind of attend and kind of keep quiet they don't really well, some, yes or no? <laughs> yeah, some of the faithful who were coming to both my mass and uh, the Society of St. Pius X mass have actually been kicked out of the Society's chapel uh, because they were attending my mass. So it, it all depends mm -hmm. on the attitude of the priest, of the, of the particular priest. But I have a number of people who have been kicked out of the Society for attending my mass and, uh, you know, speaking a, a little bit too, but too much about it, I would say so. Uh, okay. They were becoming a danger to the rest of the, their congregation. Uh, yeah, okay, so they got kicked out, not simply for attending your mass, but maybe attending your mass and sharing set of contest uh, views. Maybe <laughs> I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say so. Okay, they, and were, then, they, weren't, the, they weren't the most quiet people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then so. Recently, not recently, I don't know how recent it is, but you got Bishop Hunder that's been a, that's been at wherever he's at. <laughs> I think yeah, it's what I was saying, you know. Well, I and I I heard that he uh you know consecrated the holy oils. Is what's the what's the thoughts while you like I'm, I'm, you know obviously while you were with the SPX, was this something that no big of a deal, the idea of the of the the new the new rites of consecration and ordination was that something no I, I think when i was part of the sspx this would have been a, a big scandal yeah at the time. i think the, the mentality has changed uh, quite uh, quick and uh, it, this is all done in a very deceptive manner i believe because they know the the, the district house of the society of saint Pius the they know very well uh, the mentality of each district so they didn't choose france for example to uh, have a novice ordo bishop consecrate the holy oils in france or for the district of france it would have been an, an uproar so they, mm -hmm. they've chosen uh, carefully uh, uh germany as being a, a, a place where you know the priests are quite liberal and quite in favor of an agreement with rome but this is only a step that's being taken towards uh, accepting in general, which is already their their mindset and their doctrine, accepting in general the validity of the no, new right, new episcopal right of uh, of uh, you know new right of episcopal consecration. So, but at the time when I was part of the SSPX, this would have been a great scandal, I believe. Except maybe locally here and there, they were already starting to receive Novus Ordo priests, uh, you know, to work with them without reordaining them, but. It was the beginning of all of this. I think it would have been a great scandal, and it is actually. They, they, even in France, you know, when you speak with some priest in France who are not in agreement with this, well, they'll find an excuse in saying, "Well, this is in Germany. You know, we're not uh, concerned about this. Uh, it's not France, and so on." But what they don't know is that it's coming to their place if it continues in the same direction. Yeah, I would think that would. Uh... If they don't have a, a strong stance on it, there's no reason not for it not to. 
And by the time it comes to their place, by the way they have uh, evolved, you know, in the last few years, uh, ke keeping more, more and more silence about things, I think by the way it, it gets to them, they'll be used to it and they'll be they'll be fine with it. That's uh, the, the the danger. Yeah, I mean, at least from what I see online. Yeah, you know, that's not always a great indicator, but <laughs> what I see online is that the SSPX is becoming is certainly a lot more accepted i guess you could say among uh norvis auto traditional types and they'll go to sspx they'll go to fssp they'll go to wherever and there's no thought of that issue of the con the, the the new rights of the, the consecration rights right and uh, you know if you don't put in practice the the advice of saint john that if somebody doesn't bring to you the doctrine of christ pure and undefiled uh, do not even say hello to such a person if you're starting to eat with them and to 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 drink with them well obviously you're going to adopt a, a part of their mindset for sure so that's what's going on uh, you know i've seen many people going to the sspx in the last few years and uh, they, they tell you uh, well sometimes that the when when we get out of the chapel and and speak with people who have been there for a year now They'll speak of Saint John Paul too. There, you know, you, you see all kinds of people, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm all in favor of Novus Ordo people going to the SSPX. It's much better than to be a part of the Novus Ordo. But the question is, what teaching do they receive there? Do they receive only teaching about uh, charity and uh, being nice to people and so on, and or do they receive a, a real teaching about the crisis of the church and what what's going on and the false church that's reigning in Rome right now? I don't think so. I think they're being being presented like, uh, you know, Rome is the church of all times and uh, it hasn't. Uh, well, we're in disagreement with a few things, but we're still. Uh, uh, we still consider them as the church and and the consequence of this is obviously we we will reunite with them well or unite with them and uh you know eventually uh drink their their cool hey their kool-aid for sure <clears throat> when you were there was there and we're going to get into your after SSPX time but this is not a question i'm curious about uh when when uh while you were there was there talk about consecrating new bishops I mean, the bishops are getting old right it wasn't discussed at the time i i well it was uh, 10 years ago so there wasn't as much uh, of an of an urgency than than uh, there is now but no it wasn't discussed much <clears throat> and uh, and i I think that uh, the Society of St. Pius X didn't have as much as a missionary spirit as what I read in the beginning of its history when they would go everywhere, establish new priories. At some point, I, I know that at some point the mindset was, well, let's uh, reinforce what we have. Mm -hmm. But I think also that uh, there was uh, the opinion about the new mass, uh, which at the beginning was really the new mass was... Uh, something absolutely evil and that wouldn't fulfill the sunday obligation etc and as a consequence of this you would go uh, extra miles to bring mass to only a few people here and there but when i was part of the sspx it was hard to convince uh, the superior at least in my position to go to a new place and st say mass for a few people mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't this mindset and this uh, thought that the the Novus Ordo was so serious that uh, it wasn't to be considered as the Catholic faith. So therefore, we had to be generous in bringing the sacraments, the true sacraments and the true mass and the true faith to even, uh, uh, you know, a few people uh, here and there. Would you say that among the, the the priests that you've been aware, that you're around, that they view the new rites as something okay or, or not okay, but as something but that the, the real sacraments um well just maybe uh, the traditionals are better sacraments or <laughs> right i know i would say that the priest i've been working with were looking at the novus ordo as something evil something that wasn't right something that was valid or probably valid uh but uh, um you know something something bad i'm i'm not sure that the mindset is exactly the same uh, everywhere and uh, mm -hmm anymore you know I, I think some of them are more inclined to uh you know to consider the novus ordo as being or latin mass or novus ordo as being a matter of preference but i i couldn't speak too much about this because i i'm not there anymore you know i had sure, sure. away from them now uh, as you were as you're 
progressing to leave the SSPX uh, and you were becoming Don Don Nukum, what? How, how did you? Uh, did it take time for you to, to come to the other type of position, such as the, against the new rights of, of, of content creation, or or was that did that come later at all, or did it all sort of come together at one time? Well, I was kept very busy for the five years I was part of the SSPX. There was a lot of work to do, so uh, I wasn't uh, too much able to dig uh, very deep into these. Uh, these are questions that I looked at uh, clo more closely once I left the, the SSPX. Okay. Um, when I, I know uh, you wrote uh, a letter uh, stating your reasons and so forth uh, why you left the SSPX. I don't remember. I, I, read, I read through the letter, but I don't remember <laughs> if you mentioned, did you, uh, what was the issue of, why don't you explain in uh, your letter? What, yes, what, so what you said my, my, my letter was written to uh, the faithful I had, had been serving in Quebec and in the maritime provinces of Canada. And uh, the reason for that letter was mostly to uh, make sure that uh, everybody would get the, 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 the right reasons for my departure from the Society of St. Pius X, because I've been part of this society. And I know how uh, some of the priests were treated sometimes when they left, you know, they would, there would be all kinds of suspicions about them. Uh, sometimes, you know, reasons, well, oh, we can't tell you everything and so on. So I didn't want any of this to happen with me. I wanted to be very clear about what were the, re the reasons why I left the SSPX. So I explained my uh, my training with the Society of St. Pius X, uh, the movement I that everybody could see in the last few years about, uh, uh, you know, go go going um, towards Rome and so on, and the fact that I could not in good conscience uh, participate in, in any of this. It was impossible for me to uh, be part of this movement, which uh, I consider you know, I, I, I consider the, the Novus Ordo as part of the, the great apostasy uh, that St. Paul uh, speaks about, uh, which is larger than the Novus Ordo, but uh, the fact that Christians are, are, are losing their faith all over the world. And uh, for me to participate in this by fooling the faithful and uh, pretending that everything is all right, that uh, they, they, they have a safe refuge in, in the Society of St. Pius X was out of question. So uh, I was explaining all of this in my departure and uh, also quoting a certain text from the SSPX uh, uh, years ago when they were, at the time of uh, the Episcopal consecration, they were basically asking to be excommunicated. Please excommunicate us because we're, we don't want to be part of your church, how, showing how much you know the, the discourse was different uh, uh, 20 years later, 30 years later. So when, when, uh, when you gave that letter and you, you resigned, what, how, how did that look? Were you immediately booted out? Uh, did you have a place to go stay right away? Or how, 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 what does that look like? Right. Well, I was away. <laughs> I was away. I was in one of the missions. Um, and uh, so I wrote my letter and I basically stayed in that mission in Moncton. Uh, it, it was a place where we had a church, where we were renting a church. And uh, basically the whole congregation, most of the maritime provinces, uh, faithful, uh, agreed with my position when I decided to leave the SSPX. So we lost a few people, but most of them agreed with me. Uh, I have to say that, you know, many of them had come to tradition to, through my ministry. So obviously they, they had a great uh, trust in me. So, but most of them uh, stuck with me. And uh, so therefore I, I stayed in that uh, chapel and uh, I, I just continued uh, my ministry in that mission, and eventually I went to uh, pick up my belongings in the in the rectory of uh, of uh, you know the district house of Canada. But I didn't meet anybody there. Nobody was there to uh, to tell me anything. But I, I just took my my belongings and 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 went back uh, to the mission where I'm still today. Okay, so that ch chapel uh, that you that you were you were at while when you first left. It wasn't. <clears throat> I don't know how the property stuff works. It wasn't owned by the society. They weren't. They didn't say, "Hey, you know, get out of our chapel." Or right, no, we were renting it. And the funny part of the story is that uh, 
I, I signed the, 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 the rental agreement and I put a society of senpais the tent on the rental agreement. But I think Providence was, uh, well, obviously Providence knew what was going to happen. So the, the man there who owned the chapel, which was a former Pro Protestant chapel, told me, no, I don't want this. I don't know this group. Uh, I know you. So uh, you have to put your name. Otherwise, I'm not renting that church to you. So uh, it was rented under my name, which made things... Uh, much easier and it wasn't planned at the time you know this this was uh, uh, at least a year before you know I, I i left the sspx and it wasn't in my mind that i would leave uh, the sspx at the time that's interesting uh, so did they ever ask you about that did they say hey hey uh, we're going to send a priest down to this chapel you need to go Oh, well, no, because I, I, I contacted them, uh, you know, to tell them that I was leaving uh, the SSPX and that I was staying in Moncton in this chapel. And I told them, by the way, the uh, the keys have been changed. So uh, you're not welcome anymore. And uh, I'm going to bring you back uh, anything that belongs to you, which I did. OK. And uh, <laughs> I was just curious about that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, that, that, that chapel, you were said you, was, you were renting it, right? You said uh, was it was and so now you're no longer i'm assuming there you're some no we we've left this uh, chapel a few years ago in 2020 and we bought our, our own church uh, which is larger uh, still in the same area 15 minutes away uh we've bought uh, this chapel and we renovated we renovated it and also bought uh, a, a big property behind 37 acres uh where there's a there's a house we've built a small convent as well <laughs> for nuns uh, since then, so we've grown uh, quite a bit, uh, thank God, since that time. Now, there, um, people, uh, you were telling me that people confuse you as being part of the resistance at one point, but that's not correct. <clears throat> as maybe well, when I left, when I left the SSPX, my intention was clearly to join the resistance because you know, uh, for me, the city of Acantis world was something unknown and something frightening. And uh, I didn't know exactly, but I, I, I thought that this was, uh, I, I didn't want to be associated with these people uh, because somehow, you know, I had been told and explained, but not very clearly, but, uh, uh, you know, that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't part of, a, of a, it wasn't an option at the time. Sure. So, um, I wanted to join uh, Bishop Williamson. That was my my goal, my intention at the beginning. It didn't work. I was never accepted in the resistance. Uh, I did try hard to uh, to be part of them, but they never accepted me. And I'm very thankful today. Thank you to all the, uh, the resistance that you you kicked me out because <laughs> it led me on the on the right path. You know, I would have been still because when I left the SSPX, I thought that in joining the resistance, I thought that I would find people who had the same mindset as I did, which is recognizing some of the points that were not right in the doctrine of the Society of St. Pius X and therefore acting in a different manner. But what I found is actually people who wanted to simply reproduce uh, the same uh, ways of the Society of St. Pius X, except that, you know, we're not in favor of an agreement. But I would say that uh, if you have the Society of St. Pius X uh, mindset, mindset and doctrine, Obviously, making an agreement with Ro with Rome is the right thing to do. That's what you should do. You, you're basically an, another. Well, I'm speaking of two days SSPX uh, mindset. You're basically another FSSP, uh, except that you're just a little bit behind. But you, you'll get there. Don't worry. So I, I don't see how um, uh, you know you could be uh, part of the resistance. I don't see that. It's it doesn't make sense to me. When. What were some of the doctrinal things that you were talking about that you were hoping that they weren't in agreement with or that you didn't? Well, the question of the unacum was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. Re I remember speaking with Bishop Faw in France, one of their bishops, and uh, asking him, shouldn't we be a little bit more open about sort of vacantism? Like, shouldn't we tolerate? Uh, I was in favor at the time. I was in favor of a... Uh, uh, you know, the peace between those who thought that Francis was the Pope and those who, who thought that he wasn't. And so therefore, um, I, I was just willing to be left alone. I There was no question in my mind I would never be uh, Unacum Francis for sure. So I wanted to be left in peace. And I, I was basically telling them, you know, I don't care if you if you if you want to be Unacum Francis, that's your problem. But I, I'm not going to be. Uh, but sh could we work together peacefully? Could we? Could we just uh, go along together? 
but this, uh, you know, I was immediately identified as as being, uh, uh, you know, a dangerous uh, set of Acantis. And especially I was close to Father Pino and Father Rio, two priests in France who uh, <clears throat> were non Nakum as well. So uh, as soon as I joined, tried to join, you know, the, the, I was kicked out. Well, I, I wasn't accepted because uh, um, we were we were a dangerous group among the resistance all right did um all the, did you did you attempt to reach out to any of the uh set of accomplice groups uh when you uh not when, at the when... time not at the time uh, again i was afraid uh, to to look in that direction because uh you know it was something that was part of part of my uh of bringing, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't disposed, but I started having a collaboration, a certain collaboration with Father Ehern, though, who lives in Michigan, because Father Ehern is from Nova Scotia, and so he would, uh, he would uh, visit uh, the Maritimes on a regular basis. So we started meeting and having lunch together, and speaking and discussing. I remember having a, a long, a very long discussion about uh, with him about uh, the validity of the of the took line of bishops. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I was interested for sure. I was starting to to be interested uh, by, by by those in the city of Akantis world. But uh, again, I was still afraid of making that step at the time. What was the priest's name? Father Hearn? Daniel A. Hearn, uh, Michigan. He's an independent priest in Michigan. Okay, so you, that, that's where you talked a little bit about the, the about the took line. Right. I remember uh, together we we well we, we were in touch not long ago, and he he reminded me of that. He said, "Remember when mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we were discussing?" I was putting all kinds of objections, you know, trying to well to 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 find the truth about it, and I wouldn't just uh, accept what he was telling me. But mm -hmm. uh, we were discussing that uh, together in a restaurant, and uh, Father Hearn is going to celebrate his 40th anniversary of priesthood, by the way, this year. So. If he watches, uh, happy birthday! <laughs> no, I should look him up. I uh, uh, his name sounds familiar, but I don't, I'm not familiar with 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 him. But I've, I've heard the name. Right. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, so you. So since so, you've been kind of uh, moving more along, uh, getting more accepting of the tip line and and meeting other set of concerts, It seems. Uh, how did you get in touch with? Uh, Bishop De Silva, the, the uh, one who, who consecrated you. How did that relationship start? Yeah, well, uh, I was, I knew Bishop De Silva, um, well, uh, the seminarian De Silva, when I visited the resistance, right when I left uh, the um, the Society of St. Pius X, I did a visit to, uh, I went for a trip in France to see the Dominicans of Avrier and also the seminary of Bishop Four. And I, I saw uh, the then uh, seminary in De Silva. So there's been rumors that I, I've been at the origin of uh, Bishop De Silva being a city of a Cantist. But uh, no, we didn't even talk uh, to each other. I just saw him. I remember him at the seminary, but we, we didn't have any conversation together. I think he was aware because probably, you know, the priest we're discussing uh, are being uh, uh, dangerous, uh, Silva Cantis, uh, Father Pino, Father Rio, myself. Uh, but we didn't talk together with uh, 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 the seminar and the Silva, but then uh, as when he got ordained, you know, we would uh, speak uh, once in a while together. Especially from the moment he left uh, the resistance, uh, we started being in touch together. We started uh, talking together. So I knew him as a priest for a number of years, and obviously the problem in our missions was that uh, many people were, were converting. I had a lot of conversions, uh, baptisms of, uh, you know, conditional baptisms of, of Protestants, entire families converting to the faith, beautiful, beautiful things, you know, uh, lots of, of, uh, of baptisms of, of adults. And uh, the problem was confirmation. You know, these people were asking for confirmation, confirmation. And I, I kept pushing it, telling them, well, I don't have a solution right now, but, uh, you know, be, be quiet. Uh, it will come. It will come. Uh, at some point, it was becoming clear to me that uh, one way or the other, I needed to uh, get in touch with, uh, with a bishop. And there was no question in my mind at that time anymore. 
uh, to be in touch with the resistance bishops. And I don't think they would have accepted to come and, and give us a confirmation, but uh, my mindset, you know, had uh, evolved into a, a position that was uh, harder on the question of the Unakum because these people in, in, uh, in the resistance told me many times that uh, this question of the Unakum was too serious for us to collaborate. So I went even deeper into that question uh, and I, I eventually agreed with them and said, oh yeah, for sure, this is something that I don't want them to come over and to uh, take care of my faithful if they're, if they're uh, Unakum. So uh, I, the first bishop I contacted was Bishop Morello from Argentina. And uh, I contacted him and asked him if he could come. And also at the time I had a seminary and, and he, uh, uh, you know, needed to receive the minor order. So I, I definitely needed uh, to be in touch with, with a bishop. So, and having do done my research on the Tuk line of bishop, I came to the conclusion that at least some of them are valid without a doubt. So I contacted Bishop Morello. Uh, he accepted to come and visit us, but uh, eventually died before being able to uh, to come and give us a visit. <clears throat> My next intention was to uh, to ask uh, Bishop Dolan to to come and visit us, um, and uh, he did consecrate uh, um, Bishop De Silva, and then died uh, prior to me even contacting him. And I remember, you know, discussing with Bishop De Silva after the death of. Uh, of Bishop Dolan, Bishop De Silva was quite shocked by this, and I think it's been a, a hard thing for him. He was very much, uh, he trusted uh, Bishop uh, Dolan very much. But we were discussing this, and eventually I told him, you know, you know what, Bishop De Silva, I will have to ask you to come and, and give us confirmation. And my intention was to get in touch with Bishop Dolan, but he died. Uh, so now you're the third one I'm contacting, and I'm hoping that you, you will stay alive. Um, <laughs> uh, and so that's how it, it came. That's how it came, and uh, we're very grateful that Bishop uh, De Silva, Bishop De Silva, came here to Canada, gave confirmation to about a hundred people, and uh, also gave uh, the tonsure and minor orders to uh, the se seminary that we had here. So uh, that's how we we got in touch with Bishop De Silva. Okay, nice. Um... And then now he's, uh, uh, you, you went through the consecration process and you became a bishop. How has your ministry changed since then? Uh, not much uh, right now. You know, I'm still doing the same thing. Obviously, I'm giving um, confirmations. Uh, I'm going to give, uh, we know we've asked for registrations. I think I'm going to have to give uh, about 50 con 50 confirmations uh, in my uh, uh, missions here so that's a year and a half after bishop da silva came so we've had uh, uh, again uh, you know many conversions people joining us again but uh, i'm also going to give uh, confirmation in other places like uh, i'm going to france this summer to uh, give confirmations at uh, two priest uh, chapels there uh, so uh, i'm going to travel a little bit i think once in a while but I would say that the, the main thing that has changed, and I was a little bit surprised by this, is that uh, priests started to be in touch with me. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting, expecting that. So I got phone calls from priests uh, right and left uh, calling me, asking for advice, ad asking for help with this or that, um, or just willing to get in touch and to, to know me, you know, being a bishop. So uh, I wasn't expecting that because uh, I've been uh, in a great solitude for yeah. a number of years. So that, that was a surprise to me. And uh, you know, I, I mentioned that uh, Bishop Silva, he, he felt uh, it, important in consecrating you, you because of your of the isolation you have there, right? Is that correct? Is, well, we uh, have a large flock uh, here of, of faithful. So, and um, <clears throat> again, my my flock is dispersed in a, in a, you know, um, I would say the. the, the 1600 uh, kilometers from uh, from one mission to the first mission to the last so it's a huge territory even when bishop da silva came it was uh, it wasn't possible for him to travel to do the um, 
I'm doing myself this uh, this complete circle um, every second month. So it takes it takes me a lot of time to to be able to go and visit everybody. So it's hard to ask a bishop to uh, be able to come. And so many pay, many of the faithful weren't well. Some of the faithful weren't able to come to confirmation in where we organize confirmations uh, because quite simply they're not able to travel and so on. So that was definitely a problem. We we were quite isolated by the by the COVID as well. Uh, you know we we think that uh, this situation could happen again and uh, you know no one was able to enter the the um, the provinces where i lived like when covid happened and uh, all the borders were locked here um, i was the only priest saying the latin mass locked in these four provinces of canada so uh, not one single priest was able to enter for for 15 uh, 15 to 18 months uh, to cross the borders and and come into you know our jail so uh, uh and i have uh, seminarians with me etc so we just thought this this has become a necessity quite simply we can't uh, deal with the situation as as if nothing happened uh, uh, you know here in canada the lockdowns and the closure of borders was uh, was very hard all right um i wanted to ask you just some we'll just kind of end with some um, I don't know some practical kind of questions I thought people might find interesting. Um, in your thoughts, how how do you how do you see this coming to an end? This 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 pot this this crisis we are, we're facing <laughs> in the, in the well, church. Uh, well, I think we we have to consider that it's not only a crisis of the church; it's a crisis of the world as a whole. And we do see, I believe, the action of providence uh, working everything towards. Um, um, you know an exit of the, to this crisis things are getting worse uh, by the day and uh, i i do believe that we're uh, we will have to go through uh, some hardship not only in the church but also in the world so how are we going to get out of this crisis uh well there's the what i would call the well there's there's, there's the solution that uh, uh, some people see as being a direct intervention of god god is going to 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 intervene directly which we can can never exclude but it's not what god has done in the in the course of history most of the time you know god has created the church as a perfect society and therefore the church has all the means to uh, get out of this uh, great crisis that we're in it doesn't mean that the crisis is going to be uh, over in a matter of uh, of months or years you know sometimes god uh, can leave the church for a, a great number of years in, into turmoil into difficulties but uh, you know the, the, the there's the charismatic i would say uh, solution to the crisis our our own version of 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 uh, charismatic you know saying that uh, we there's nothing that can be done um uh, you know we we have to uh, wait uh, for the, the direct intervention of god i can understand this position uh, definitely uh, but uh, i do believe still that there are solutions that that could be implemented and this would be the the, the gathering and uh, speaking together and agreeing to get together of all the catholic bishops and in saying so, uh, you know, I include uh, even bishops who are now uh, unacum, like the Society of St. Pius X Bishop at this point. But if we, if if everybody would uh, agree in, in just meeting together and, and discussing this and coming to an agreement uh, to, on, on the situation of the church, then the next step could be, you know, now what, what can we do? Is, is there something that we can do? I, I, I don't know. You know, is there something that we can do? Uh, but for as long as uh, um, people will continue considering the Novus Ordo Church as being the church established by our Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can be done. That, I think that's the key, uh, recognizing that this church is uh, completely foreign to uh, the Catholic Church established by our Lord Jesus Christ. From the moment we, we admit that, then... I think there are solutions, but uh, you know what will we need to see in Rome uh, before getting to that conclusion? I don't know. Uh, for those who, you know, you said a lot of the people that attend your chapel 
can only get mass a few times a month or, or maybe every few months or something of that nature. Um, what, uh, what are some advice you give to for sanctifying the day when there is no mass available? Well, let me tell you first that I've been, I'm quite familiar with that situation. And my experience in the last 10 years is that I don't see people who don't have a mass every Sunday to be, uh, to have a, a lesser faith or to be uh, weaker in their faith than people who go to Mass every Sunday. I don't see that at all. I find, on the contrary, that sometimes people who don't have Mass every Sunday uh, appreciate very much the holy sacrifice of the Mass, are so eager to see uh, the visit of the priest, are so happy to be able to receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, to be able to go to confession. Uh, I see a great zeal among those who don't have Mass every Sunday. I think they do appreciate very much uh, the gifts that they receive when they're able to receive them. So I think this could be a consolation for you, uh, first of all, you know, to, to think that uh, you're not uh, on your way to hell because you, you don't have Mass every Sunday. And this is not something absolutely new. You know, if you think of... Uh, uh, the colonization here in Canada, same uh, probably in the United States and, and, and other places. There were many people who were not able to go to Mass every Sunday. Priests could not travel by, by car, by plane, by train at the time. So you had Mass uh, when you could. Even here in the Maritimes, they were among the Acadian population. So the Acadian population is the French uh, speaking population of uh, this area here. And, you know, they were Catholic, obviously. So um, they, they, they were places where the priests uh, would be able to come only once or twice a year to, to provide the sacraments. So some people had been designated by the priest uh, to do the baptisms to uh, even celebrate, well, celebrate, uh, uh, receive the consents of, uh, for marriages. You know, there were certain men who had been designated to do this, and they would even have what we call white masses, which means that they would, uh, you know, one of the elders of, of the congregation would uh, read the text of the mass, uh, uh, lead the population, the, the, the congregation in prayer, and, um, you know, uh, prepare for the coming of, of the next uh, uh a priest. So these are not completely new. Today, uh, w even those who don't have mass very often, you know, most of them are able to have mass more often than these people uh, in the past. Well, there is the option of uh, watching a, a mass online, obviously, uh, listening to a sermon online. Uh, I don't personally like too much the idea of uh, kneeling down in front of a screen or uh, attending. I think we have to, well, I'm saying that this is an option, you know, you can do that for sure. Uh, but I like uh, the mindset of uh, just taking your missile and, uh, or uh, taking a good prayer book and uh, praying as our, our ancestors used to pray. And I, I, I always tell people who are in that situation, Remember, maybe one day, we, we don't know what's ahead of us. Maybe God is preparing you by uh, the, this trial the, that of missing Mass on certain Sundays. Maybe God is preparing you for the future when, when maybe for a time you will, be, you will have for a number of years to uh, uh, pray on your own and uh, sanctify yourself uh, on your own without uh, having an access to the sacraments. We never know. So if God puts you in that situation... Well, uh, then you have, um, uh, you know, you have the the graces. All the graces will be given you. But one of the things that Bishop De Silva told the faithful when he came to uh, uh, the Maritimes here, and uh, many people have listened to to what he said, he told them, you know, if you were living in a village where there would be no water, don't you think that you would uh, uh, move to to a village where there's water for you to to be able to survive? So. I know that some people can't move, you know, that there are professional reasons, sometimes uh, some reasons why you, you're not able to move, but uh, some people are able to move. And the remark of Bishop De Silva was very good. What we do for our body, imagine, you know, you cannot drink the water of this village. Uh, are you really going to stay in that village? So do you value your, 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 your body more than you value your soul? So definitely, if there is an option, the option is clear. You know, you have to leave everything behind and uh, get closer to a place where there is mass. 
if you have no option for different reasons well god is with you and he, he won't leave you alone because you 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 have no access to to the to mass and the sacraments um Excellency, I think I uh, will kind of conclude with 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 that. Uh, did you have any anything you'd like to to say or add of, that maybe uh, I didn't I didn't address or we wanted to talk about? Well, no, I, I think we 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 covered. Uh, I mean, the the intention, your intention was to to know a little more about uh, uh, my history here. Uh, you know, it's no secret that you sent me some of the questions before, so I could uh, get prepared a bit. And uh, I, one of the questions you had and you didn't ask was, uh, um, how were your years? Uh, you know, how, uh, I, I don't remember exactly the question, but how, uh, what can you say about your years uh, since you left the SSPX? And mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, these, I think, were the, the happiest uh, years of my life, really. And I say that sincerely because when I was part of the SSPX, <clears throat> uh, the mindset was, uh, uh, you know, if you leave the SSPX, uh, you're going to to be in a in such difficulty. You're you're going to be in despair. You're going to be in anguish. Hmm. Uh, it, it, it wasn't the case. It, it, these were wonderful years. The first years of my uh, priesthood outside of the Society of Saint Pius X, I was alone, completely alone, for four years. I'm not alone anymore. Uh, we have a nun. We have uh, seminarians uh, living with us. Uh, but the, the four first year of my um, priesthood outside of the Society of Saint Pius X, where uh, very, I was very lonely. But at the same time, you know, I think it was a good time to reflect on uh, on the crisis of the church, uh, reflect on where I wanted to go exactly, etc. Et and this might be a message to to those who, who, you know, maybe members of the clergy who are hesitant to uh, to make that step when they they know because I know some of them know that it this step should be done. Um, well, uh, God doesn't abandon those who do the right thing for him. If you see something to be the truth and you pursue this truth with all your heart, uh, the graces of God are going to be amazing and you're going to be uh, helped. You know, our, our history here at the mission is, is very much this. Everybody agrees here that, uh, you know, it is not uh, my work, it is not their work that brought uh, everything together. Uh, there's been a divine protection. There's been a, a you know divine uh, help to to allow us to grow quickly and to um, be able to be established uh, as we are today. So, uh, well, uh, my gratitude to obviously Almighty God and Blessed Virgin Saint Joseph for all the help we have received. And uh, well, to conclude, uh, 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 you know, hold on, everybody, uh, keep keep the faith, uh, uh, hold strong. We we we're doing you know the right thing in keeping a Catholic tradition. There's there's no doubt, and in resisting modernist Rome, <clears throat> we're doing the right thing. And uh, you know, if, if God is with us, uh, who who is going to be against us? I'm I'm glad I asked you this question. <laughs> So I can hear the answer. <laughs> All right, I, I appreciate it, uh, Your Excellency, for, for for coming on. And I know this was a, a few months in the in the in the making. Right, so right, I'm right. Glad. Um, Thank you for uh, for having me. Oh yeah, it's been great. I'm, I, I was I'm excited. I was excited to hear your story. Uh, I guess we'll close. Uh, do you want to leave us with a, a blessing? And we'll... yeah, for sure. So. <laughs> Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti, descendat super vos et maniat semper. Amen. And uh, I implore the, the prayers of all of you who are going to look at this video for us and uh, our seminarians, our sister, uh, and all the faithful, uh, the families here. Uh, we're in a union of faith and uh, uh, battle with, with, with all of you. God bless you.